So once again, I'm doing fork seals. I don't know why, but every single bike seems to need fork seals lately. But uh, I thought that this would be a good opportunity to actually mention because this is one of my bikes. It has uh, parts in it that are not stock. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about what's going on with uh, emulators as well as drilled rods, different springs, etc. So uh, over here, this is the, these are the guts to a stock fork. Uh, don't mind that stuff. So the stock damper rod has holes in it. These holes control um, how much oil flows through. The size of that hole is actually intentional. Um, well, because uh, the bigger the hole, the more oil can flow through, the faster the fork uh, compresses or rebounds. Um, there's also a little hole here for rebound. I think it's rebound. Of course I'll get it wrong. Um, in any case, uh, this, this hole basically controls how fast air comes out as well as um, the oil flowing, flowing past it. So, uh, this is a stock rod. When you add a uh, gold valve or Recor or any other emulator, there's valving in here that controls uh, how quickly oil can come through. So, as oil uh, pushes through, these plates spread out, let oil through. As oil pushes through back, there, is, uh, there are these little bypass holes. Um, now... What ends up happening when you install these? Um, if you install a gold valve with the stock damper rod, you now have two things that are trying to control the flow of oil. So you have the, uh, the emulator trying to control how much oil flows through, and then you have the uh, holes in the damper rod. Which is a little weird because whatever the slowest one is, is the one that's going to uh that's going to be doing the work so if you're installing gold valves you need to braze or jb weld or just weld this whole shell um in this case i just basically tie attacked it in and then ground it down and then the other thing that people uh that needs to happen is you need to make these you need to make these holes no longer useful you may basically need to blow them out. I think the size is like 11 millimeter or something like that. So you blow them out so that they're huge. That way oil can go through them easily. And then the emulator is the one that is the part that actually controls how, mu how much and how quickly oil goes through. Uh, there are two ways of doing this. There was a, the old way, which was, I think it was race tech's instructions, were to drill an extra hole. Uh, for a while, a bunch of the suspension guys on the forums uh, basically were saying, don't do that. Uh, drilling the extra hole is not enough and makes the thing weaker and all sorts of, uh, annoying things. The current recommendation for setting up, for setting damper rods is to drill the holes out. That way they're nice and big. You can really kind of see how big the difference is. Uh, if you if you buy um, from let's say traction if you buy their pre uh, pre-done rods you're basically getting this you're getting four big holes and no pinhole um, you can do this yourself this is not that hard and then um, obviously I have a few for sale somewhere somewhere on the site if you poke around that 8v you'll find them um, the other thing that happens with installing uh, springs and emulators and so on. So these are, this is my, I believe, uh, now that I actually have it out, they're usually stamped on the ends, but uh, all right, so this one is a 0.95. Um, so anyway, so that's a 0.95 spring, uh, stock one next to it. Uh, this may be off of first gen, may not be, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using it to, as an example. 
So what happens is because you install different, different springs, they're a different size, and now you, have, um, you also have the emulator sitting there. So you need to cut a different size preload spacer so that the entire system ends up the same height and ends up with the correct amount of preload. So there's a, um, there are a bunch of instructions. Racetech has instructions, I think, for how to cut preload spacers. Sonic springs are the ones I usually recommend to people on their site. They have uh, how to cut preload spacers. They're pretty easy to follow. Uh, I do recommend if you're, um, if you're planning to do that, read the instructions. That way you'll know what to expect. So that's just a quick little rundown on what's inside stock forks versus uh, adding springs and emulators and modded, uh, modded rods. Hope you guys found that interesting. If uh, you want something else, or you want to see something else, let me know. Uh, I can try to muddle my way through a lot of other things. I may not know everything, though. So if you want to see something, let me know what you want to see.